Each year, over 230 million surgical procedures are performed worldwide. Of those 230 million, 7 million patients have a wrong procedure, something adverse happens to them. In an industry as high risk as surgery, we have to make sure that we are practicing the best, safest care we possibly can. When I think of the surgical safety checklist, I think of it as a, as a way to keep our patients safe. And it also keeps our staff safe. So to have that safety checklist is a way that we can ensure that we have consistent quality. It decreases the, the number of errors in the operating room. It improves communication between the providers and the staff. The surgical safety checklist is a way for us to verify that we are performing the correct procedure on the correct patient each and every time. The World Health Organization has suggested that every hospital in the world perform a surgical safety checklist prior to every surgery. At Spectrum Health, we've identified three key areas, the briefing, the timeout, and the debriefing. The briefing is done when the patient is brought into the room and positioned before they go to sleep. Everybody stops. Everybody that is going to be involved in the uh, case is present. The staff is introduced when the patient comes into the room. We check the wristband, we check the birth date, we check the procedure. This is uh, 41457. That's you? Ah, perfect. And we're doing a laparoscopic colostectomy, correct? We have multiple things on our checklist that we, that we discussed in regards to, the, to making sure that we have the right patient, the right side. And we preoperatively have the patient mark the side uh, of the operation with an X, and then we confirm that by initialing the site ourselves. We talk about pertinent information, allergies, uh, blood product availability, any other information that needs to be shared prior to starting the surgery. The patient is awake and encouraged to participate. I have feedback from patients directly stating that the benefit to them was that they felt more confident, more comfortable with the team. It really bolstered their confidence in understanding the surgery they were having. Time out, the big one. We're already draped, everything's in position, we've already confirmed what we're doing, but this is one more check. Before there is a knife passed, before there's a bovi given, nothing happens until this time out takes place. Dr. Rodriguez's patient here for repair of right inguinal hernia and umbilical hernia. Patient's been positioned and padded properly. She has her uh, DVT prophylaxis on and the antibiotics. We're again verifying the patient's name, the procedure, the correct side to make sure we have all the necessary equipment that we need. If it's a sided procedure, we're making sure that we can see the mark. Um, is it in place? Are we at the right side? We want to make sure that every I is dotted, every T is crossed before a knife is passed to the surgeon to start the case. After the surgery is over, the third step is, is called a debriefing. It looks back and making sure that we've captured all the information that we need to know about, looking for any potential opportunities for improvement in terms of the whole process. Sometimes things can change during surgery and what the surgeon does, so we just want to make sure we're all on the same page. The surgeon will review what he did. Talk about uh, the specimens that may have been removed from that patient, the tissues, were, are, are labeled correctly, are, are called the right things, and are on their way to the lab. Uh, also, sponge, needle, instrument counts are confirmed to be correct. I still look at the list every time to make sure I'm covering everything, that the counts were correct, if there was a specimen, um, whatever needs to be done, call the uh, family. So before the surgeon leaves the room and the patient leaves the room, all of the staff can be confident that we've kept that patient as safe as possible through the entire experience. The use of the surgical safety checklist is a standard in, in the operating room here at Spectrum Health because we know that's the safest thing for our patients. We would like the potential for error to be zero and that's our goal and what this does again is promote communication with the team and removes that potential for error. I think among some surgeons there's a mentality that the surgical safety checklist may be a hindrance to their practice. It takes away autonomy or independence. And I would really argue that it does the opposite. It actually bolsters the entire team. It facilitates communication between the staff. You're bringing many disciplines together 
for a rather significant event and it gives them a chance to be on the same page with the same mission before the procedure begins. Well, that's the beauty of that checklist is that you have it there in front of you in your hand and you can go down the list and that you can be sure that you don't miss anything as you prepare to start your case. Humans really struggle with good communication. It makes us pause, step back and review that in, in the fast-paced OR environment that we're doing everything correctly for that patient. Why is this important? It's important because one, everybody gets put on the same page. You're a team in there. Everybody's got their job, but it's one time when we focus on the patient. It's the most important thing we do to assure a favorable outcome for the surgery. It doesn't take very long, but it's very crucial to do these extra steps because if it were my surgery or your surgery, you'd want all these steps to be done every time. A patient is putting their trust in us. They're basically putting themselves in our hands. That's a huge weight of responsibility and we need to take that very seriously. Our patients depend on us to do the right thing. 